Now let's calculate the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor. So the cylindrical capacitor has two conductors, co coaxial conductors, cylindrical conductors. The inner uh, one has the plus charge Q and the outer one has uh, minus charge Q. Remember, for a metal capacitor, two conductor capacitor, uh, one uh, conductor must be uh, positively charged, the other conductor must be negatively charged, and the strength of the charges of these two conductors must be equal to each other. So the length is given by L, and the inner core uh, has radius of A, and the outer core, outer shell has the radius of B. So <clears throat> to calculate the capacitance, of course, first we have to calculate the potential difference between these two conductors, the inner core, the plus Q uh, conductor, and the outer shell, minus Q uh, charge. Um, for this, we may um, use the direct result of a linear charge density, electric field of a linear charge density around the uh, 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 inner conductor. And the first thing is, we know that the electric field uh, inside of a conductor is zero. So uh, the electric field is zero for the radiuses uh, uh, less than uh, A, which is the radius of the inner conductor. And the electrical field is again zero for the radiuses which are larger than B, again because of the Gauss's law. Let's uh, think a Gaussian surface, cylindrical surface, which is uh, uh, which surrounds these two conductors, uh, imaginary Gaussian surface. So the flux through this Gaussian surface will be zero because the uh, Total charge which resides in this Gaussian, uh, uh, the Gaussian surface will be equal to zero because we have a net zero charge inside the Gaussian surface, plus Q and minus Q. What about <coughs> the electric field in between these two conductors? Again, by Gauss's law, we already calculated that for a linear charge density around uh, the, uh, the uh, electric field around the region of the linear charge density will be equal to Q uh, divided by uh, 2 pi epsilon 0 r lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 r here lambda is the linear charge density in our configuration the linear charge density is given by the total charge divided by the length of these cylinders so this is the expression for the electric field and uh, it is radially outward and this is for uh, the radiuses between A and B. Next, uh, we will calculate the potential difference between the plus Q and the minus Q. And uh, we will use the definition of the line integral for this, uh, the potential difference of the outer shell VB minus VA uh, is equal to the minus uh, the integral of the line integral of the electric field from uh, A to B. We will pick up just any uh, line connecting uh, from from the uh, the center uh, of the conductors uh, to the uh, uh, outward uh, uh, direction. So, of course, this dr will be uh, dr times the unit vector r. So the integral is just a simple integration of 1 over r from a to b and these are the constants and q divided by l is the linear charge density and the result is just the total charge of one of the conductors divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 times l which is the length of the cylinder and times the natural logarithm b divided by a b is the radius of the outer shell the cylindrical shell and a is the radius of the inner core so once we know this potential difference, uh, the rest is uh, very easy to calculate the capacitance. It's just the total charge. The total charge of one of the conductors, again, uh, the total charge is for both conductors is zero, but uh, the definition of the capacitance is just, just, just take the capacitance of one of the uh, uh, conductors, and this is divided by the potential difference. So the potential difference is given in terms of the total charge Q, and this expression reduces to 2 pi epsilon 0 times L, the natural logarithm B divided by A. This is the capacitance of a cylindrical 
e, kapasitör. 